there should be. Hey, kids, it's a practical <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and uh, joining me again I is- I can't uh, see you. You can't see me? Uh-uh. I, I don't, that's okay, I can see you. Wait, the meeting is being recorded? Yes, we're doing it now. Okay, not by me though, right? No, I, yeah, it, everything's okay. We're gonna talk about uh, the end of the world. Uh, Do I need this? I pray for when I spend time with you. Do I do this? No. <laughs> Don't, I don't know what to do with my hands. Come, Lord Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the end of the world. Ah, oh, it's the end of the world as we know it. How do you feel? Fine. That's good. I think. Sure. Right. That's like, is that copyright? That can't be copyright. I guess if you don't sing it, right? I mean, so you have to sing more than like 30 seconds and you, as much I as I sing, love- I didn't sing fun, that much of uh, Tevia and- Here you hit the verse. You can't hit the chorus. I want you to do the verse. Um, <laughs> okay, that's fair. It's right. the end of the world, right? At the time of recording this, it's the end of the world. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it is. but uh, within the church year- and Before that in the year for like 2000 years, it's been the end of the world. Um, yeah, we don't which, like to hear that. I'm just saying. No, it's it, true. I, that's what we're going to talk about. But people hate that, right? We want we 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 want the Left Behind series, right? That's right, that's what happens because then you have a second chance and uh, something wild to believe that actually is the end of the world because like we're tired of waiting for it. Like it, it it's been almost here for so long that uh, we all we can do is sort of try not to make too many super obvious jokes about it while we tongue in cheek say actually be ready it could be anytime yeah you know what was bad about those movies everything yeah yeah okay. pretty much kirk cameron i didn't understand that right like kirk cameron went for growing pains right and then he was supposed to be like the next big guy right he was all on all those teen bop uh uh, uh magazines back in the day and then he just went off oh, oh, like nobody knew of him and then all of a sudden he just came and said now i'm gonna do uh eschatological end of the world sort of stuff rapture movies it was bad he should have stayed with growing pains we should have stayed with jesus um <laughs> alan thick that was the dad so, so go, go ahead I, i'm not i don't even know how to i, I don't know how to, <laughs> Okay, so end of the world. So it's the end of the church year as uh, at time of recording. I don't know how how quick you guys like uh, uh, turn yeah, these yeah. over and put put these in, but it's the yeah. end of the church year ish, right? I don't know what you one year guys do. Um, what's that? Every, the same thing every year because it's the one year, right? No, but I don't know what you actually do. So for for us within the three year, uh, it was we were in Luke, and so we we're uh, reading last week from Luke twenty one, and it was mm-hmm. it was weird because Jesus not weird yeah weird whatever uh, Jesus it, it's uh, it's Holy Week he's talking in the temple probably on Wednesday of Holy Week right and uh, he's he's ta- everybody seeing the the temple it's it's so beautiful look at all the stones and then Jesus starts there about talking how the stones are gonna uh, fall down and crumble. And it's, it's, it's crazy because right there he's talking about very, something very specific. It's kind of like the near future thing. It's something that will happen. Rome's going to come in and knock down the temple because the temple can't stand anymore once I actually die on the cross and fulfill the whole temple stuff. I can't let that abide because people are going to keep going there and, and sacrifice stuff. So the temple will be destroyed. Jerusalem will be sacked. And that's the near, the near future thing. And then he starts weaving into mid-future and to like long-term future and eschatological stuff and he just weaves all over the place in regards to that sort of stuff and so you get to hear about earthquakes and uh persecution and kings changing and this and that and all over the place and i think he does that for a very specific reason uh, as uh, Pastor Goodman is quite bored with what I'm saying right now, I'm looking. No, you actually have to tell them. the reason. Like you can't just say there's a reason and not say what it is. I think the reason is because, uh, like you said, uh, nobody. And Jesus says this too. Nobody knows the day or the hour. Nobody knows the time in which Christ is going to come again. And so when we read those sections, it, it's in Luke, it's in Mark, it's in Matthew. 
all of those sections, we hear about blood moons and earthquakes and wars and rumors of wars. And everybody wants to say, oh, look, this new war in Ukraine, that means it's the end times, except there's been wars for 2000 years. Oh, we've got this solar eclipse, except we've had that forever. And Jesus is saying, kind of like how you let off the whole thing of, uh, we have no idea uh, when he's going to come. Uh, it could be today. Be ready. Or it could be 2,000 years from now. Be, be ready. ready. Be ready. Well, how, do you, how do you be ready? Oh, you have like, to how, make sure that there's oil in your lamp, man. So we, we go back and listen to the uncultured saints. If another, uh, be, be our third listener. We would love it. Um, or, or, or just recognize that um, if you can't even take it, it's the end of the world as a serious statement, you're not going to be able to do the works necessary to be prepared for the end of the world. So instead, just be in Christ, be baptized, be faithful, go to church, receive the gifts. And, and there, whenever the world happens to be, you're ready. If you die before it gets here, you'll live in Christ. That, that's how prepared you are, that even if, if death itself were to come to take you, were, that, that you would be somebody who was, was a, a victim of the wars and rumors of wars and all of the awful things that happened on the earth in the last days. You're not simply an a, a object lesson to the real Christians that they ought to pay attention to Jesus, but you're somebody who was brought into Jesus' kingdom by his death and resurrection given to you in word and sacrament. Right. Uh, and it, it's... It, it, Unfortunately, the sinner, I think, likes to uh, hear what Jesus is saying, and then when he says, be ready, uh, it, it, it likes to think that we can actually affect change, all right? So we see the, the wars and rumors of wars and, and all this sort of stuff, or, or the, the changing of uh, governments, or, or famines, and blah, 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 earthquakes and hurricanes, and but we can't. Like all of that stuff is so far outside of our grasp. We can't fix the big things. We can't change it. And not only can we not fix it, but Jesus is saying these things are bound to happen. They will take place. Stop thinking that we can create some sort of perfect utopia here on earth if we just pull the right lever, vote for the right guy, make sure the right person doesn't do X, Y, and Z, and make sure that the, that the, the weather doesn't kill us. If we do all of that, then we can, we can stop uh, uh, catastrophic stuff. And Jesus is saying, nah, all that's going to happen. It must. It must because this is a fallen world. And it's a fallen and dying world. It's got to come to an end so that Christ in his second coming can actually redeem even fallen creation so that we have this new heavens and new earth and live in this perfection of the Garden of Eden as before the fall. This is, it must happen. So as the Christian sits here and says, oh my gosh, everything crazy is going to happen and it's, it's happening all around me and it's just so overwhelming. What's going to happen? The world is going to hell in a handbasket. And I think the Christian's answer is, so what if the world is going to hell in a handbasket? That doesn't mean that you don't affect the things around you. That doesn't mean that you aren't actually a good neighbor to the, the, the people in front of you. So just look at the stations in your life and what God has, the vocations that God has given to you. And so fine, I'm a student and this is what I do. It's so good, I'm a son. Okay, so this is what I do as a son. And this is, this is how I do these things. None of those are actually preparing you for Christ's second coming. As you said, the preparation for Christ's second coming is be where he's promised to be for you. So that now when you're receiving Christ, in today's day and age, right here in time and space, Sunday mornings, baptism, Lord's Supper, forgiveness of sins, you're receiving Christ now so that he will actually make sure that you are prepared for his second coming to receive him again. It's receiving him in Christ. It's receiving Christ so that you can receive Christ. That's all it is. It's just justification, Jesus for you, all over the place. It's not you have to make sure that your life is perfectly set in good order so that when Jesus comes again, he won't catch you doing something bad. It's no, let him catch you in Christ. You've made that wonderfully boring and and i'm grateful like I, I truly actually am so i i mean really think about it though we we, we always want to sort of like make the, the end of the world this like great extreme battleground for your soul uh but that means you might lose and, and what happens on the days where you just already feel like you've gotten kicked in 
I want something boring that's absolutely certain. It's, it's Jesus for sinners the same way it ever was, because this way, when everything else is falling apart, you have something comforting and, and not just another battle to fight and hopefully not lose this time, even though you lost the last six. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for, thanks for doing, doing this thing. Um, hey, so I, uh, interesting. Uh, I mentioned Alan Thicke, right? The dad who was on Growing Pains. Yeah. Right. Did you know he also did a lot of jingles? Please like see. No, I can't because that would be copyright. But okay. uh, for, for, for the 80s kids, uh, he wrote, and you could hear his voice when you actually uh, uh, listen to it. He wrote uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the jingle for uh, 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 Different Strokes with Willis. What you talking about? What are you talking about? Right. Will it? Right. He wrote the jingle for that and he sings in it. How awesome is that? That's he's that's, dead now. You you ruined it. <laughs>